Here comes Mumphy. Back in 1975, Catherine Toza's Mumphy books had been adapted into a television puppet show titled Here Comes Mumphy, and the show has become extremely obscure. 52 episodes of this show had been created, and so far the only episodes of the series that have resurfaced since come from a very rare VHS tape, known as Two Hours of Fun with the Munch Bunch and Mumphy, that was originally released in April of 1983. The VHS release contains six episodes. These episodes, along with half an episode uploaded to YouTube back in 2012, and a Persian dubbed episode also uploaded to YouTube back in 2012, are the only episodes known to exist. No other footage of this show has been found or recovered since. The majority of Here Comes Mumphy has become lost. Super Mario 64 Big Star Secret all the way back in August of 2007, a video was uploaded onto YouTube titled Super Mario 64 Big Star Secret. This video was a low quality fake step by step tutorial made in Windows Movie Maker showing how to unlock Luigi in Super Mario 64. At the end of the video, the infamous KV Zombie commercial jump scare would appear and then finish with credits scrolling down from the top. In 2012, the video had been deleted by the uploader due to hate and criticism. The video became quite iconic. It gained over 900,000 views before it got deleted. Many people over the years have been trying to find this video, however it remains lost to this day. The only footage that has survived of this long lost video is a reaction video, in which you can kinda see some footage of the video's jump scare and ending on the computer screen. And the thumbnail to the video had been found through the Wayback Machine, which is apparently an exact frame from the 2 minute and 56 second mark of the video. Hopefully this long lost YouTube video is found soon. Family Guy Online Family Guy Online was an MMORPG that was available to play from 2012 to 2013, based on the animated series Family Guy, believe it or not. In this online game, you were able to customize your own family guys and complete many missions given to you by many different characters from the series. It was not making much money at all, so it was shut down, and Family Guy Online hasn't been playable since. I would love to see this game get a remake sometime soon. I feel like it would actually become quite popular if they brought it back. Roblox Jumpscare Virus on the Lost Media Wiki forums, a user who goes by Mikey G had made a post discussing a lost Roblox jump scare. This is what they had to say. Back in 2011 2012, there was a YouTube video showcasing some Windows 7 software that appears to hack Roblox and give the user free Robux, the currency of Roblox. However, the download link in the description contained a file that jump scares the victim by going full screen, displaying a poorly drawn screaming face on a black background, with multiple lines of text saying F U flying around the screen while playing extremely loud mariachi band music. This video was pretty popular, around 10k views. There were multiple comments on the video such as got in trouble with my parents because I didn't have headphones and press control alt delete to close it. If you know anything about it, please let me know. This sounds super interesting. I have covered a lot of lost YouTube jump scare videos but this is different. This was a video that contained a download link which would jump scare you. This would have messed me up as a kid if I fell for this. This video had apparently 10,000 views. I know that's really not much, but maybe someone watching this remembers the video and this jump scare virus thing, and maybe still have the jump scare download on an older laptop or computer. They went on to say that it was screen recorded, had no commentary, with video editing slash inspect element to make it look like the software changed the currency. The title of the video was along the lines of free Robux generator working 2012 or 2011 depending on the upload date. Old videos were suggested but OP confirmed them as not the video. The video nor the download to this jump scare has been found yet. 
it's likely that it has been deleted off YouTube entirely. Mystery 80s Show On Reddit, specifically the r slash help me find subreddit, a user made a post asking for help in finding the show scene in an old childhood photo. It's kinda hard to make out, but some sort of cartoon can be seen on the TV in the photo. OP would provide more details. Alberta, Canada, mid 80s Christmas time, likely CBC or CFRN. Could be a Christmas special or on VHS. I don't believe it is the land before time, although it does kind of look like a dinosaur, not Valley of the Dinosaurs or Dink the Dinosaur from what I can tell. Despite stating their belief that this isn't the land before time, many users were quick to put forth the idea that this is without a doubt Sarah from the land before time. Perhaps being a commercial for the movie, I mean they do look very similar, both looking like orange triceratops. Others stated that this was not the case. The Land Before Time wasn't released on VHS until September 1989. A few people even noticed some details were a bit off and didn't line up with this Sarah character. Even if it is Sarah and is taken from the Land Before Time, no one has been able to find this exact frame from the TV anywhere. Still, no one knows where this came from. There have been many other ideas brought up on what this could possibly be. Maybe some teddy or some creature thing, I don't know. Really interesting mystery though, I would love for this to be solved soon. Millsbury In this video, I will bring up a few cases of lost media suggested to me through my Instagram. If you haven't already, go follow my IG. I was messaged about a lost online game and yeah, thought it was pretty fascinating. I noticed that you cover a lot of lost online games, and one that I don't see many people talk about is Millsbury, which was created by General Mills and promoted mostly on their cereal products. It was similar to Neopets, except that instead of four pets, you created an online avatar, built them a house, fed and clothed them, etc. It started in 2004 and discontinued at the end of 2010. I used to be really into it, but I had drifted away before the game ended and never knew it closed until much later. Now there's not much content from the game archived, it's unplayable, and it seems like no one really cares about it anymore, oh well. So yeah, do any of you remember playing this? It doesn't seem too obscure, there is quite a handful of information on this game found within the internet and you can actually find a lot of gameplay footage on YouTube. But yeah, this game, since it shut down, has become lost and unplayable. Nintendo On Extended Hoax Video Back in 2005, a hoax video was put together showcasing an alleged leaked teaser showing off the next upcoming Nintendo console. This fake video was made by Pablo Belmont, who has created many other Nintendo hoax videos you have probably seen. This fake trailer became quite iconic. It tricked many users online into believing that this was the real upcoming Nintendo console. Interestingly though, this iconic fake trailer is actually a rushed recreation and isn't the original Lost extended video. During the production of this video, Pablo's hard drive had unfortunately crashed and most of the files of the project had been corrupted. The extended version of this hoax video was meant to be 30 minutes long. The final video we ended up getting only represented 10% of what Pablo had in mind of the video. Apparently, hundreds of gigabytes in data were wiped. This sounds really sad honestly, it would be so disappointing putting so much energy into a project just for it to corrupt and have most of it disappear. The only things which ended up surviving of the original version were the parts of the video showcasing the Metroid and Mario games for this console. The full extended original video will unfortunately never see the light of day. RA Home Vision Commercial RA Home Vision was a video rental shop in the Philippines, and during the 90s, a commercial was aired on different channels advertising this video rental shop. The commercial was supposedly unintentionally creepy to viewers due to the alien hand on a spaceship scene that was contained in it. It's a commercial that became quite iconic, 
a lot of people can remember it. It's been mentioned online within different forms since the early 2000s, however to this day, it has not resurfaced. The alien hand on the spaceship scene from this commercial had actually been found. It was found on a show named Sick O'Clock News that aired on the channel IBC13. Numerous recreations and mock-up videos of the Lost commercial have been created since using this found scene. And yeah, the full commercial has become lost. Shrimp McBites So back in 2021, a user on Reddit made a post talking about Shrimp McBites. In this post, the user was trying to find any type of proof that this was a product that was once served at McDonald's back in 2013. It's a McDonald's snack they remember trying to order, but there was no evidence of them ever existing online. They included a couple mock-up images of what they remember the product and posters advertising it looking like. The post gained lots of attention. A forgotten McDonald's snack lost to time sounds pretty interesting. Eventually, some evidence of its existence was discovered. Another user found out if you search Shrimp McBites on Twitter, you'll find a bunch of users talking about the product from 2013, the same time period that this was apparently seen. Then McDonald's were contacted and they confirmed that, yes, the Shrimp McBites did at one point exist at a few locations back in 2013. To this day, no advertisements of the product have been found. Not even pictures of the Bizarre Shrimp McBites exist. For sure one of the most mysterious McDonald's products made. The Reluctant Dragon and Mr. Tocho This was an American animated series based on the stories The Wind in the Willows and The Reluctant Dragon made by Kenneth Graham. This series aired on ABC from September 12, 1970 up until January 2nd, 1971. Didn't last very long, lasting 16 episodes. In this series, each episode had two Reluctant Dragon segments and one Mr. Toad segment. The Reluctant Dragon segments revolve around a dragon named Tobias, who is allergic to daisies and breathes fire if around any. The Mr. Toad segments revolve around Mr. Toad, a toad who drives a race car and causes all sorts of trouble. Out of the 16 episodes which were made and aired on television, only just 7 are available to watch online while the rest remain lost. Secret Builders Secret Builders was a free-to-play MMORPG from 2007 made for children. It could be played on iOS, Android, or on your computer browser. Within this game, you would be able to hang out and interact with other players, make a home to keep pets, throw parties and invite friends over. You could also dress up and do fashion shows. Secret Builders was eventually shut down in 2021 and is missed dearly by lots of people. The All New Captain Kangaroo the all-new Captain Kangaroo was a rebooted series of the show, Captain Kangaroo, which aired in 1997 for Fox Kids and Fox Family Channel. 40 episodes of this show were created, however to this day, only 10 have been found. Every other episode from this series remains lost and uncovered. Crash Village Crash Village was an online multiplayer game released in 2007 on the official Crash Bandicoot website. Its sole purpose was to advertise the main console titles being released around this time. The game was similar to games like Club Penguin. Players could customize their own Crash Bandicoot characters and also walk around an online virtual world interacting with other players. You could as well also find all kinds of different minigames to play. Crash Village would be shut down in 2011. None of the minigames were saved and the entire game itself became lost and unplayable. Only a handful of screenshots and like two gameplay videos exist online. The game has fallen into major obscurity. MTV Total Request Live Animated Special Here is another one I got from the Instagram, talking about Total Request Live. This was a television program broadcast on MTV that premiered in September of 1998. It would feature popular music videos which played during its countdown and was used to promote different actors, musicians and other work. 
In 2004, they ran special animation themed episodes that would include animated segments. Shout out to Super Chess Kid for the suggestion, this is what they wrote to me. Hey, if you've not already, you should talk about the Lost MTV Total Request Live animated special, where the Total Request Live people interview characters from the animated shows that aired at the same time. The Powerpuff Girls, The Fairly Odd Parents, Family Guy to be specific, as well as Sly Cooper? Only two of these segments have been found, these being the Fairly Odd Parents and the Sly Cooper segments. And a screenshot of the Family Guy segment, but everything else is lost outside a few articles covering it. So yeah, interesting stuff. The Family Guy segment is lost and only a screenshot of it exists, which was found through an archive of a Family Guy fansite. The fansite also included a clip, however wasn't retained by the Wayback Machine. And it appears the Powerpuff Girls segment is fully lost. Absolutely disgusting. This image here has been going around the internet for a pretty long time. It is a photograph of some sort of news report with an appalled looking news reporter with a lower caption reading, absolutely disgusting. It's a meme which has become pretty popular within many forums, often used as a reaction image, and has just become famous and well known in general. Interestingly, the actual news report this image came from has become lost media. The original broadcast of this image has never resurfaced. The image was uploaded to the internet in May of 2008 by American writer Mike Sachs as part of his Photos on TV series. Shortly after, the image would start spreading around the internet, quickly becoming a mainstream meme. It really isn't known or confirmed what this news report was about. All that's known from this image is that this was a news story broadcast by UPN 9 News in 2005, showing news reporter Bob O'Brien in front of a set of suburban homes. This is the only surviving image of this broadcast. Plants Defense Lost Plants vs Zombies Knockoff So on the Lost Media subreddit, a user who goes by Windows Ultimate had been looking at blogs discussing rip-off bootlegs of the famous Plants vs Zombies game. They ended up finding what appears to be a lost PVZ ripoff known as Plants Defense. This is what was written in the post. So, I usually like to make fun of PVZ bootlegs, especially the ones with really bad effort. But while I was researching, there is a blog containing a bit more info about some other lost PVZ bootlegs, such as Plants vs Aliens, etc. But for some reason, I found this strange game called Plants Defense on the blog. According to the blog, the game was developed by a mobile game studio that was at their last quarter. The game was released back in 2009. The plants were straight up rips from the original Plants vs Zombies, such as the Pea Shooter, Sunflower, Cactus, and Chomper, as seen in the image. The enemies according to the website were gummy worms, cute cyclops, chicken looking ghouls, and a mysterious battle tech robot. The game also contained at least 5 levels. I tried looking for gameplay or anything about this game but there's zero info, so if anybody has more info about this game, please let me know. Very strange stuff, a Plants vs Zombies ripoff with its existence only being known because of an old blog. Is there any other information out there on the internet about this game? For now, this game remains a mystery. Guy Yelling Among Us Sound Effect Okay, so this is a pretty funny entry. I'm sure you're all aware of this sound effect. Among Us! I hear it on TikTok every second. In different YouTube videos, I always hear it. It's, it's everywhere. Apparently though, no one knows its origins. Absolutely no one knows where it actually came from, who created it, or when it was made. That's all I really gotta say for this entry. I don't have anything else to add, just a funny lost media thing. This iconic meme just really spawned into existence. No one knows where it came from. The Rotten Tomato Show The Rotten Tomato Show was a series based on the review website Rotten Tomatoes. This series aired on Current TV's lineup and was also posted online on their website and YouTube channel from 2009 to 2011. 
This show would revolve around the two hosts, Brett Ehrlich and Ellen Fox, reviewing different movies that were arriving to theatres at that time every week. This show would as well include various segments like sketches and top fives of movies. Every now and then, there would also be some celebrity appearances in episodes. 74 episodes of this show were created. Episodes had stopped being made in September of 2010, after the show was cancelled with no explanation. It wasn't completely cancelled though, as segments of the show were still being seen in the show Infomania. But then, that show got stopped in 2011. Today, only just a few clips of this show have resurfaced. Most of it has become lost. Mr. Beast Lost Deleted Videos Mr. Beast is a huge YouTuber you're all probably aware of. Mr. Beast has been making YouTube videos for a long time, and over the years, many of these videos which were once on the channel have become lost. Many of Mr. Beast's older content began being privated and deleted from the channel starting 2018, likely due to the dangerous stunts being featured in them and potentially offensive content. Lots of videos just haven't resurfaced since and remain lost to this day. Turkish Ben 10 Games Back in the late 2000s, early 2010s, Ben 10 was becoming a pretty popular series in Turkey. Because of this, Cartoon Network partnered with a company known as Project Alide to develop a bunch of games related to Ben 10. Many of these games have become lost media. One of these lost games is translated to Ben 10 Meteor Attack. This was a PC game where the player would use a webcam and hold a card to the camera to move Ben in the game avoiding meteors. These cards were found within different Nesquik products, and yeah, this game has become lost. Another lost one I find pretty interesting is some KFC promotion games. With these Ben 10 games being completely mysterious, nothing is known about them. According to a KFC commercial, after ordering the menu seen in the commercial, you would be given a code for one of three Ben 10 Alien Force games. The website to play these games though is inaccessible now. No information or even gameplay of these games has been seen anywhere. The last game they ended up making was Ben 10 Big Clash Istanbul, a PC game where Ben would have to fight off different aliens in Istanbul. The game was available to play on Cartoon Network Turkey's website, and required an activation code. You could find these activation codes after purchasing some Ben 10 toys. All of these Ben 10 games have become lost media, and haven't seen the light of day in a long time. Meet the Simpsons on the Lost Media subreddit, a user made a post discussing a Lost Simpsons short that apparently hasn't seen the light of day since 1990. This is what the post had to say. When the film Die Hard 2 was released in the UK in August of 1990, in some cinemas, a Simpsons short, not any of the ones featured on the Tracy Ullman show, titled Meet the Simpsons played before Die Hard 2. As promoted in this London newspaper advertisement from the time, presumably this short was to help introduce UK audiences to the show or its characters, since The Simpsons season 1 was set to premiere on UK TV the following month. There was also an entry of this short on the British Films Classifications website, where its runtime is logged in as being 1 minute and 24 seconds. Yet, I cannot find the short anywhere on the internet and, as far as I'm aware, is not included on any of the DVD bonus features. And I can't find any info as to what the short contained. Or was it just clips from the show's first season? Either way, I'm curious, as a Simpsons fan myself. This is some really intriguing stuff. I would love to know more about this mysterious short and what it could have possibly contained. Hopefully in the future we learn more about the Meet the Simpsons short. Lost Mario Browser Games for McDonald's Toy Promotion On the Lost Media Wiki forums, a post was made by user 3 Frogs discussing obscure Lost Mario Flash games made for a McDonald's toy promotion. Two Lost Flash games, Mario's Driving Range and Jammin' with Mario, were hosted on the Happy Meal website for a brief time in 2006. 
These games were on the Happy Meal website and were part of an official Mario toy promotion for McDonald's Happy Meals. The toy line was part of a promotion known as the Take the Mario Challenge and lasted from September 1st to September 21st, 2006. I also remember there was a Mario screensaver to download on the site. I recall it cycling through different Mario character renders appearing on the screen while a grassland stage scrolled in the background. If you let the screensaver play long enough, it would give you a password to access a later level in the Mario's driving range game. I think the password was Happy Meal or something like that, but I don't remember for sure. They would include an archived link to a Toy Mania website, providing some information about the toy line itself. No information about these games can be found online. No screenshots or videos of the game exist. And the only mentions of it come from a few forum and blog posts, mentioning the games and screensavers. There's an archive of the Happy Meal website, which uses Flash, during the Mario promotion, and it has a game section but this game's page doesn't seem to load at all when clicked on. Unfortunately, this entire site seems to be mostly non-functional in this archive as most links don't seem to work at all. These games probably won't hold up well, but I'd be interested in seeing and playing them again. I think some people would be interested in seeing these games uncovered since they were officially endorsed promotional Mario games that are quite obscure, much like that Mario Net quest that was found not too long ago. It's probably a long shot, but maybe somebody more savvy with the Wayback Machine might be able to find the files for these games? A user said they decompiled the main SWF for the site, and it seems that this place was where they stored all the files. Nothing from this URL relating to Mario has been saved in the Wayback Machine. Such an interesting and really obscure piece of lost media that no one has really talked about ever. It seems that these games have become completely lost and forgotten. No evidence suggests that this particular promotion occurred anywhere outside the US. Putting this in the video just to put some more eyes onto it, I'm sure a lot of people will be interested in this. Hand of Odd Oddworld is a video game series and fictional universe, created by developers of Oddworld Inhabitants under the direction of Lorne Lanning. I'm sure you're all familiar with at least one of their games, probably Oddworld Apes Odyssey which is their most popular. Used to play this as a kid all the time and was absolutely terrified of it. Apparently as a kid, in kindergarten when we did painting time I used to paint Abe exploding on mines. Not really sure what was wrong with me, but I guess I thought that was a good idea. But anyways, Hand of Odd was a strategy action adventure game being developed at Oddworld Inhabitants during the early 2000s. At the same time the game's Munch's Odyssey was being developed. Munch's Odyssey was being developed for the PlayStation 2, and eventually was switched to the Xbox. Upon this, Hand of Odd was put on halt, and all efforts had been moved onto Munch's Odyssey. Hand of Odd would be mentioned every now and then over the years. Apparently in 2011, it was announced Hand of Odd had resumed development, but it was just never released. All that remains of the game is a few screenshots and gameplay information. Crash Bandicoot and Spyro Adventure World So this was a promotion with Nabisco done in early 2004 on the website candystand.com. Tied in with Crash Bandicoot Purple, Ripto's Rampage, and Spyro Orange, the Cordex Conspiracy on the Game Boy Advance. In special packages of Nabisco products, Crash Bandicoot or Spyro themed cards would be included. These cards would include codes that would unlock new mini games to play on the website. This Crash Bandicoot and Spyro Adventure World promotion ended up finishing a year later in April of 2005. The cards found could no longer be redeemed and all the games became unavailable. Funnily enough, not only are all the games lost and inaccessible, but a lot of the card designs are a complete mystery. Only 22 of the 90 plus cards have been recorded online. Max the Cat This was an animated children's series from 1996, based on the book series of the same name. The series revolves around a cat who goes by Max a cat with no tail that travels the world in hopes of one day finding his tail. Two seasons of this show had been aired, with 52 episodes in total, having both an English and French version. 
For a very long time, there had been no footage of this show online. That was until 2015 when a user on YouTube uploaded the show's intro and credits. That same year, two whole episodes of the French version of the show was uploaded onto Dailymotion. In 2019, a user had filmed their TV showcasing a whole Max the Cat episode, however is a pretty low quality recording. Then in 2022, the user who had uploaded the show's intros and credits back in 2015 uploaded a full English episode onto their channel as well as a compilation of incomplete episodes. Apart from all this though, everything else from Max the Cat has disappeared and all the other episodes are completely lost. Professor Layton Mobile R this was a re-release of Professor Layton Mobile, released back in 2012. This app had multiple different games to play, as well as including music, exclusive art, and other exclusive content. This was only available for Docomo's FOMA 903i series slash 703i series phones. I'm not familiar with those phones, so I probably just butchered all of that. As well as some other later models. On October 28th, 2014, the service was discontinued, no games have been archived, and only just a few screenshots and some gameplay has been saved. Littlest Pet Shop Online Here is another case of lost media suggested to me through Instagram. Hello, I wanted to share probably lost games with you. One of them is called Littlest Pet Shop Online. I used to play that game when I was little, and the game is the reason I learned English because it didn't allow any other languages in the chat. It even had toys you could buy, but later the game was closed and I don't remember when, and I was so sad. Littlest Pet Shop Online was an online multiplayer game developed by EA in collaboration with Freema Studios and Hasbro. You customize your own pet, play a variety of games, and talk with friends. The game was active for two years, released in 2009 and been shut down in 2011. The game is now unplayable. Tuned In Tuned In is a Lost Game Show pilot that was filmed at Nickelodeon Studios in Orlando, Florida in 1998. Only a few seconds of this Lost pilot can be found within a compilation video that had been made by former crew members of Nickelodeon Studios for its 10 year anniversary in the year 2000. This small glimpse of the pilot showcases an unnamed cartoon character. Interestingly, Nickelodeon in 2021 released a game show known as Tuned In. However, it is unknown if anything from the original pilot was used in the new series. Voodoo Magic Voodoo Magic was an online strategy multiplayer game where four players would go up against each other in a battle with tactics and black magic. This game was played on a website known as We Play Here, starting back in 2004. Eventually in 2007, Atari had purchased the website and eventually shut it down. There really isn't a lot of media showcasing the game, in fact, there are no screenshots or video footage showcasing any type of gameplay. There is only the game's cover, promotional art, and some screenshots showing the game's launch screen and We Play Here website. The game is completely lost. Nickelodeon Game Builder On Nickelodeon's website, there was a Flash game that existed known as Nickelodeon Game Builder. In this Flash game, users were able to make their own levels using different assets based on several Nickelodeon properties. Nickelodeon Game Builder was available for several years, first beginning in 2009 and eventually shutting down in August of 2013, and having all of the games removed. You can still find all the created games buried within the Nick.com website, however attempting to play any of them only leads to an error message. Bear in Underwear on June 26, 2015, Amazon Prime Video premiered a 12-minute failed pilot known as Bear in Underwear. This pilot episode was available on their service up until September 25, 2015. Most of the episode has become lost. The only footage that exists of this 12-minute pilot is three short scenes that are available to watch on Amazon's YouTube homepage. 
Math Jam. Math Jam is an educational game which was released in 1985 for the Apple II computer. This was the first ever game published and developed by Naughty Dog, a company that would go on to later create many iconic franchises such as Crash Bandicoot, The Last of Us, and more. Though at the time when they made this game, they were known as Jam Software. In this game, the player would focus on solving math problems in more of a fun and engaging way. It featured a funky character wearing sunglasses named Jammer, who gives different reactions based on what answers would be given. Currently, there is no way to play Naughty Dog's first ever game, and not even footage exists online. The only thing that's available is the cover art. SpongeBob SquarePants Happiness Squared SpongeBob SquarePants Happiness Squared was a SpongeBob game that was developed in the late 2000s by Heavy Iron Studios. It's pretty much just an early version of the video game SpongeBob SquarePants Truth or Square. This early version was not known about until game developer Rob Roto uploaded a short teaser slash trailer onto his YouTube that he created for the game, which differs in many aspects compared to the final game. No early beta builds of the game have been leaked onto the internet. LEGO Star Wars 3 The Clone Wars Beta This was an MMO game released by LucasArts, made in 2011 to promote the LEGO Star Wars 3 The Clone Wars game. In this game, users could travel to different planets and explore within a 2D space with other players, doing numerous mini-games and whatnot. This was eventually shut down in April of 2013, after being purchased by Disney. There are many gameplay videos online showcasing the game, however it cannot be played today. This Just In This Just In was an animated adult sitcom from 2004 that was broadcasted on Spike TV. The show revolved around a character named Brian Newport, a journalist who drinks in a bar with his friends and gets into other crazy antics discussing politics. Six 20-minute episodes of this show had been made, and so far, three have been found which were uploaded to YouTube in 2013 by a user who goes by Bob Kiwi. The remaining other three still remain lost. Galaxy Boy Troop Galaxy Boy Troop was a Japanese TV series created by animator Osama Tezuka. This show was pretty interesting, as it would use a combination of animated scenes and puppets. The show aired on NHK from April 7th, 1963 up until April 1st, 1965. This series was about a boy named Rob, who travels around the galaxy attempting to find a material that can restart Earth's dying sun. 92 episodes of this show were made, and so far, only one episode has resurfaced. The episode was found in France and had French subtitles. It's suspected to be the 67th episode. There's also a storyboard of episode 28 and animation sequences from episode 87. The show even had a bit of merchandise made for it. There exists a very rare audiobook and coloring book. The Simpsons Game 2 The Simpsons Game is one of the best games ever made. Such a cool game. This was a 2007 platformer developed by EA Redwood Shores and released by Electronic Arts. There was apparently at one point a sequel for this game being developed. Not much is known about this sequel, and the only evidence that proves its existence comes from a past employee of EA's LinkedIn page, with Simpsons 2 prototype being listed on the page. It was also stated that this game was scrapped in favour of other projects, which is very sad news. I would genuinely love to play a new Simpsons game, or hit and run game, one of those two things would be the best ever. No screenshots, footage, or any builds of the Simpsons 2 prototype have ever been leaked online. EVR Race So EVR Race was one of Nintendo's first true video games, released back in 1975. It was a race betting game which used electronic video recording tape. There were two tapes for this game. There was one with car racing and one with horse racing. Players would need to bet on what racer was going to win, and if the player bet correctly, they would win the game. 
There was not a lot of interactivity since the videotapes were pre-recorded. The game is extremely rare, good luck finding a cabinet of this anywhere, Nintendo themselves don't even have one. A few tape reels for the game however seem to be floating around and exist. Back in 2016 though, a cabinet had become available for purchase on Yahoo Auctions. It's not available anymore, and the cabinet that was being sold had its entire control table missing and wasn't able to turn on. So even when this rare cabinet shows up, it's pretty messed up. Rugrats A Live Adventure From 1998 to sometime in the year 2000, a musical based on the Nickelodeon series Rugrats had been touring around many locations. This musical was known as Rugrats A Live Adventure. This musical was pretty popular, however despite this, there is very little footage of the musical that exists today. Not a single professional recording has survived or been released anywhere. There was a professionally shot version of the musical in Spanish aired in Mexico on the Televisa network in 1999. This however hasn't resurfaced. The only English recordings of this musical are two YouTube recordings from Nick Rewind, showing very brief random clips. And yeah, every single performance is lost. Look at all that red. Toy Story Early Test Footage Back in 1992, Pixar along with a company called High Tech Tunes had made early test scenes of the movie Toy Story. These test scenes are really interesting to watch. Both Buzz and Woody look extremely different to what they would eventually become. Early test footage also shows Buzz being voiced by Billy Crystal, not Tim Allen. Billy Crystal was Pixar's first choice for the role. It's theorized that more early test footage of Toy Story exists, however hasn't seen the light of day. Devin Hendricks, JPEG Mafia, and Hathaway JPEG Mafia is an American rapper, singer, and producer many of you watching might be aware of. I've been listening to him quite a bit lately, Bro, the ghost pop tape has been on repeat for like the last two months. So, I've decided to talk about some JPEG Mafia, Devin Hendrix Lost Media. In early 2010, he had been releasing music onto the internet under the name Devin Hendrix. A lot of music that was released under the Devin Hendrix name is still available to listen to today. However, many songs have unfortunately been lost to time and have completely disappeared upon being removed and not archived. One of these songs which have been lost to time is a lost song known as Anne Hathaway. It's a song which a lot of fans have been wanting to find and is apparently Peggy's earliest known track. However, it has just completely vanished and was eventually deleted sometime between March 1st and October 18th, 2011. The song was apparently 2 minutes and 29 seconds long and samples none of them by Robin. The earliest archive page of his YouTube channel during this time reveals that the song was also available on his YouTube page at one point. Interestingly as well, the oldest known tweets related to JPEG Mafia are a bunch of bot pages promoting the Anne Hathaway track. It's a song that JPEG Mafia fans have been really wanting to find, it's the Devon Hendrix Grail. But due to how small of a following Peggy had during this time and the song being available for only a short time, there's a very good chance this song will never see the light of day. Orion The Short Shorts Festival in Asia back in 2010 revealed that a 150 second adaption of the manga Orion would be shown at the festival that year. Since this festival however, the short hasn't been released anywhere, no footage of it can be found. The only thing that exists is just some promotional images. That's gross. On Reddit, a user made a post about a show they remember watching called That's Gross. This user cannot find the show anywhere and can't find any evidence that it had ever even existed. When I was younger, sometime around 2011, I remember watching an on-demand live-action educational children's TV show called That's Gross. I've tried to search for it for around 3 years now because it's so vividly burned into my brain but I can't find it anywhere. Each episode was somewhere between 2-5 to five minutes long from what I remember and each episode was hosted by a guy who looked a lot like Seymour from the film Little Shop of Horrors, wearing the glasses and his hair all neatly combed to the side. 
Each episode would open with a theme song that was a montage of teenagers being grossed out by various things and going ill, while an original funk song played in the background with the tagline, it's time to get gross. Then it would cut to the main show, where the host would greet himself and then tell a little story about something gross such as trash, bodily fluids, mold, skin, or other biological things in a gross manner. After speaking about said thing, he would then perform some science experiment or inform the audience about the topic. At the end of each 2-5 to five minute episode, the host would bring his sister on and gross his sister out with the knowledge he learned about the gross thing that was spoken about. While I'm not sure if this is very important, the producers of the show also created another show with a similar concept in the same format. But instead of gross things, it was a middle-aged Caucasian man wearing a magician hat and cape. He looked a lot like Michael Carbonero and educated the audience about easy, safe magic tricks that children could do, such as the wobbly pencil trick or the hot coin trick. All of this is so vividly burned into my brain, and I just want to know if anyone else remembers any of this. A user commented, What research have you done? Is there any proof that this show exists? In which OP would reply, I wish I had proof, but I was so young at the time that I don't have anything of it. It was on demand on Cox Cable sometime in 2011, if that means anything. I know this will probably never be found because people don't seem to believe me, but it's out there somewhere, I know it. Another commenter stated that the show is probably Oh Yuck, in which Obi said, No, this show is not the one. Does anyone watching this know anything about this show? It's crazy that it has just disappeared. Bananas in Pajamas, Self-Serve and Odd Socks Bananas in Pajamas This is an Australian children's show I grew up with and remember watching. Is this a show that just Australians remember watching or did other people grow up watching this too? Bananas in Pajamas ran from July 1992 up until December 2001 on the ABC television network. The entire series has been readily available online since 2021. However, interestingly, two episodes have become lost, not surfacing anywhere online. These lost episodes are episode 162, Self Serve, and episode 198, Odd Socks. Both of these episodes aired during the fourth season of the show in 1996. It's currently unknown how many times these episodes had re-aired on television. It's only known that episode Odd Socks re-aired at least once in 2005 on ABC TV, as seen by an old TV guide. Currently, these episodes remain lost and missing. Only two photos exist from each episode, which indicates someone had these episodes at some point. Scoob and Doozy Scoob and Doozy was a children's puppet series which aired on CBC from 1999 all the way to 2003. This show revolved around an orange toy bulldozer named Doozy and a yellow toy excavator named Scoop. It made use of puppetry and live videos to teach children about machinery and construction. 65 episodes of this show had been created. Only just a handful of episodes have resurfaced. Most of these found episodes come from two VHS tapes and a DVD which featured episodes of the show. The majority of this series remains lost. Bobby says, This was a live action clip series which had been hosted by Bobby J. Thompson. This was broadcasted on Cartoon Network and ran for around a month, from August 19th, 2009 to September 23rd. This series would show Bobby going around the streets of California, giving advice and commentating. It was not a well-received show at all. It ended quickly after many negative reviews and low viewership levels. In fact, this series was one of Cartoon Network's shortest-lived live-action series, running for only six episodes. Currently, only one episode has been found, this episode being the Tony Hawk's Warehouse episode. None of the other episodes have since resurfaced. Only just clips, screenshots, and a few promos of these lost episodes are available. Kid Kirby Kid Kirby is a cancelled Kirby game that was meant to be developed by DMA Design. This game would have featured a baby Kirby, 
and gameplay would have been sort of similar to Angry Birds where players would drag and launch Kirby around the levels using the Super Nintendo mouse. No plot for the game was developed, and was cancelled due to many years of barren progress on development. It was also likely cancelled due to low sales on the Super Nintendo mouse, the controller that this game would use. A developer who worked on Kid Kirby released sprites for the game online. It was stated that a demo was produced, however has vanished. These sprites and a couple concept art are the only remaining media of the game online. No demo of the game has been released or leaked. Me Too Universe Me Too Universe was an online multiplayer game from 2008. This game had relied on Erwin Toy's Me Too portable gaming device to function. This game was trying to encourage physical activity by converting real world steps to points within the game. In the Me Too Universe virtual world, players could explore various islands, clearing challenges in order to advance to each new island. While exploring, players were able to adopt virtual pets, open stores to sell widgets, and interact with other real online players. Me Too Universe had been shut down sometime after January 31st, 2010, and of course, hasn't been playable since. The Twins This was an animated series based on a book of the same name. This series aired on YTV in Canada and CITV in the UK for around a year, lasting 26 episodes. The show is about twin sisters Lil and Nelly, who are both very different from each other. Their personalities often clash, getting them into some trouble. They eventually, though, end up working things out. So far, only a handful of episodes have been found, while most of it remains lost. Cabbage Cabbage was a game that was first announced in 1997, being developed by Shigesatu Itoi, Zunkazu Ishihara, and Shigeru Miyamoto. In this game, players would raise a creature known as Cabbage. According to Miyamoto, the game had been in development for over 5 years. It was an interesting game. It was set to release for the Nintendo 64 disk drive, and would have made use of its internal real-time clock, so players could keep their Cabbage creature and its world running even with the console turned off. Apparently this was also a project that they were working on without supervision of Nintendo's president. Finally, a few years later in 2000, updates on Cabbage were finally put out. Miyamoto stated that he was looking forward to getting a move on with this game, and it was planned to be playable at that year Space World 2000. However, no screenshots, footage, or demos were ever revealed, due to other projects that were taking over space and time. News for Cabbage slowly over the years died down, and eventually in 2006, Miyamoto stated that Cabbage was pretty much a cancelled game, but revealed a lot of its concepts were transferred to other games like Nintendogs and Animal Crossing. No footage or images from this game have ever seen the light of day. Do You Trust Me? Do You Trust Me? is an unreleased game which was commissioned by CBS in 2007 and hosted by Tucker Carlson. So pretty much in this game show, two contestants team up and test each other's trusting ability in order to win a million dollars. They work together to build up cash and gameplay would be influenced by the amount of trust they have for one another. The show didn't end up releasing, and no episodes have resurfaced. The only footage which has managed to make its way online was from a demo reel uploaded to YouTube in 2017. Line GoGo Go Twinbee This was a free-to-play mobile game from 2013, developed by Drake Hall Studios and published by Konami. It was an infinite vertical scrolling shooter game in which the player would control Twinbee, a robot aircraft that shoots automatically. It was a high score based game and users would compete with weekly high score ratings. The game was eventually discontinued in 2014. Attempting to play the game after its discontinuation would leave you with just a stuck menu screen showing an error message. Champola Alone with Champola Commercial Champola is a Filipino snack well known for its flavoured wafer sticks. 
People from the Philippines have been trying to find a commercial that aired back in the 90s advertising this product, which aired on local channels like ABC5, RPN9, and GMA7. According to the Lost Media Wiki, this is the premise of the commercial. The commercial starts with a kid eating Jampola while watching a horror movie. A bus sculpture was seen in his back and the sculpture stared and saw Jampola. Each wafer stick is going outside of the box and the sculpture was seen eating it with the voiceover saying, so deliciously crispy. Someone then went into the kid's house with the kid being scared and he took a baseball hat and he hides. The kid screamed and pointed a weapon at someone that went into the kid's house. It turns out it's his friends and they laughed at him. They happily ate Champola and the bus sculpture laughed in an evil manner. The kid and his friends got scared and ran. The slogan and product appeared with the sculpture in the background with the voiceover saying, Champola wafer sticks, one stick is not enough, followed by a sound effect of the sculpture's evil laugh. The said commercial was animated, especially the eyes and the mouth. It is said to have a creepy male voiceover and ominous background music. This commercial sounds so chaotic and just crazy, I don't even know what was happening half the time in that premise. To this day, the commercial hasn't resurfaced anywhere within the internet and is now considered lost. Not seen the light of day since the 90s. Kung Fu Panda World Kung Fu Panda World was an MMORPG developed by DreamWorks released in 2010. Players would be able to play as characters in style with the film and play all different types of online games featuring locations from the Kung Fu Panda movie. A lot of time and money was put into the game, however it was unsuccessful. Since the game wasn't making a lot of money, it was eventually shut down, becoming unplayable and now a piece of lost media. Drawn Together Pitch Pilot Drawn Together is an adult animated sitcom which aired on Comedy Central for quite some time. It's a series which is advertised as being the first ever animated reality TV series. A small pitch pilot was put together when pitching the show to Comedy Central. Not much is known about this pilot. The only production details for it come from a 2003 Variety article. That states it has a length of 4 minutes and was screened prior to October 2003 for the then programming executive of Comedy Central Lauren Caro, who immediately allowed the project to go forward. The only piece of footage from this pilot which has resurfaced comes from a behind the scenes documentary on the Drawn Together movie, the movie DVD. The footage of the pilot seen in this is extremely brief and lacks audio. From what is seen in this brief pilot clip, it is very different from the final series. Having choppier, rougher animation and many characters containing designs that wildly differ from those seen in the actual show. Apparently, those who worked on this pilot are not very fond of it and for that reason it's unlikely it will ever see the light of day. Pinky and the Brain Game Back in 1997, a Pinky and the Brain game was planned to be released for the Sega Saturn and PlayStation. It looks like it would have been a 3D game in which you could control Pinky or the Brain and attempt to take over the world. The only evidence that this game was at one point being developed comes from an archivekonami.com page, showing what looks to be cover art and cutscenes. No prototypes, footage or any other screenshots of the game have resurfaced. Interestingly though, the composer for the game had put the soundtrack to the game on their SoundCloud, so there's that. Lalukan Demilka Apologies if I'm just completely butchering this name, but Lalukan Demilka, which translates to Amilka Skylight, was a French Luxembourgish children's TV block that included many skits with people appearing alongside puppets, showcasing different cartoons. It was created by Jean Chalopin and its host was singer Karen Sherrill. It was first aired on Luxembourg TV channel RTL Television in 1987 and then eventually made its way onto French channel M6, airing from 1987 until 1989. As of today, only one full episode, two small clips and the opening song have resurfaced. The show has become extremely rare. In 2009, there was some dude on a website who claimed to have 50 episodes on VHS. They didn't share any episodes however, as they were more interested in trading these tapes for other rare shows. 
What a Dummy What a Dummy was a sitcom that was broadcasted in syndication from September 29th, 1990 to May 25th, 1991. The series saw other successful shows like ALF and Small Wonder and try to make something similar to them. You know, a typical American family living with some strange out-of-place creature that needs to be hidden from everyone. This series follows a family who get a hold of a ventriloquist dummy their great uncle used to use before his passing. They soon discover that this is no ordinary dummy, it walks, talks and thinks for itself. For multiple different reasons, What A Dummy was not a success. The show faced issues with budgeting, there was difficulty and problems with the cast, and as well in some regions. The stations who had the rights to broadcast the series were network affiliates who had prior commitments to broadcast college football games and other sports events, resulting in the series having an overall inconsistent time slot placement. 24 episodes had been created. The show never got a home media release. It has fallen into major obscurity and today, only just one episode has been found, along with some other small clips and promos. Return of Donkey Kong In the official Nintendo Player's Guide from 1987, a game was mentioned known as Return of Donkey Kong. The game would be mentioned again in the 1988 Nintendo Fun Club magazine in its fifth issue. The game was obviously cancelled as there is no game that exists or ever released known as Return of Donkey Kong. Based on these advertisements, you would have played as Donkey Kong, being able to throw barrels like the original game. It is unknown if any progress had ever been made on this game, as no images or footage has ever resurfaced. The Needle Drop Early Videos Anthony Fantano is the internet's busiest music nerd a YouTuber who does lots of music content. Apparently, around 160 videos which were once on his channel are now missing. Anthony has gone on to say that he no longer has any of the deleted videos. The only way that these videos could ever resurface is if someone had downloaded or saved them during the time they were available on YouTube and decided to re-upload it. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory lost unreleased Michael Jackson soundtrack. In early 2003, production for the 2005 Charlie and the Chocolate Factory film had begun, and various actors were being considered to play the role of Willy Wonka. Michael Jackson really wanted to play the role of Willy Wonka. He wasn't approached or considered for the role by Warner Brothers, but Michael had actively reached out to try and get the role, even making a soundtrack for the film. Michael Jackson showed Warner Brothers the soundtrack he created, and asked them if he could take on the role of Willy Wonka. Although they were a fan of the soundtrack, they denied Michael Jackson's offer. They believed it wasn't a good idea to give Jackson a leading role in a kid's film. They did offer him a smaller role, but he rejected. After being denied, Michael Jackson angrily stated, If I can't have the part, they're not getting the soundtrack. This soundtrack has remained lost and unreleased ever since. No one has heard any of these Michael Jackson songs. Jammin Jammin was an arcade game from Atari that was released in 1985. There is very little information on this game. Its known gameplay would consist of two rock members playing a tune on screen, and players would have to play it back to them. That's all that's known about this game. The only gameplay video that exists online comes from a VHS that had been transferred to digital almost two decades ago. Mini Monos Mini Monos is an eco-based MMO game that was released back in 2010. It was similar to games like Club Penguin, however instead of having penguins, it had monkeys. This game revolved around saving the environment. You could interact with other players and play all sorts of minigames. The game was eventually suddenly shut down in 2013. The game has been unplayable since and is now lost media. Heist An action game was once being developed by Exile Entertainment known as Heist. The game was revealed in 2007 and was set to release in 2008. A trailer was also released which showed it was going to be released on the PS3, Xbox 360 and PC. The only thing really known about the game comes from a 2008 GameSpot interview, which stated that the game had three main characters, Kid, Crumb and John. Kid would specialize in driving, 
Crumb would be the main shooter, and John is the leader of the group. For a while, the game's development had fallen silent. No information about the game was being released. In 2010, Heist was removed from the Codemasters release schedule, confirming that the game had been cancelled. Super Mario Spikers During the Wii's early years, Next Level Games, the company behind Super Mario Strikers and Mario Strikers Charged, had plans to release a Mario-themed volleyball game which incorporated wrestling elements, known as Super Mario Spikers. They made lots of content for the game, concept art, animations, even a playable prototype. After showing this all to Nintendo, it was outright rejected due to the game violence going against their code of honor, and the game quickly stopped any development. No footage of this playable prototype has surfaced or leaked. The only things of this game online are prototype animations and a variety of concept art. Leader Dog This was a 3 minute animated short series which aired on Nicktoons from April 18th 2004 running for 13 episodes. It was about a normal dog and his adventures which are captured by aliens, who mistake him to be Earth's leader. The majority of this series has become found, however two episodes, known as TV or Not TV, and Halloween are still yet to resurface and are lost. Mix TV Presents Eminem Mix TV Presents Eminem was a PlayStation and PC game that was developed by Conspiracy Entertainment and was based on rapper Eminem. The game was revealed on May 14th, 2003, and was to include different puzzles to complete, four Eminem music videos, and unnamed bonus material. The game had been fully finished, and plans to create other Eminem games were already in discussion. However, Eminem's representatives had pulled out the deal with Conspiracy Entertainment, due to hopes of finding a bigger company to release the game. Conspiracy Entertainment would go on to file a $5 million lawsuit because of this, and the game was never released. No footage or images of the game exist. Interestingly though, there is an IGN review for the game, detailing some information about it. Nuclear Sub Command Nuclear Sub Command is an extremely rare and obscure game which was developed around 1992 by VMC Software. This was apparently a realistic nuclear sub simulation game made for the Commodore 64 and was being sold in a 1992 issue of the US magazine Run. The thing is, this advert from the magazine is the only known presence of the game out there. No screenshots, footage, or even the game itself have resurfaced at all. There's a chance it was left unreleased. Or maybe it did release, and not a lot of people bought it. So it's just become an extremely obscure and rare game. Family Guy Pitch Pilot Sometime in 1998, a pitch pilot for the series Family Guy was created. Fox had given Seth MacFarlane a small budget to create a pitch pilot. Seth, along with Jim Keish and Productions, spent six months out of his house animating the pilot. This pilot would become the series premiere, containing many differences such as different character designs and clothing, having multiple scenes cut and containing better animation. The first seven minutes of the pilot was found within a Family Guy DVD set that was released in 2003. However, this was just half of the pilot. The rest of the pilot from this DVD was cut and replaced with a coming soon bumper. Proof that there was more to this pilot comes from a fan's tripod site, which contains different low quality images and a few articles on Blogspot. Some short snippets of the pilot can also be found in a Seth MacFarlane interview, as well as an early commercial for the show. Back in 2002, Seven QuickTime player clips of the full 15 minute pilot were available for download on a fan tripod site. These clips had the same low quality look as the images which were found on the other tripod site. It's theorized that the full pilot was once online and shared around, yet it still hasn't resurfaced. Laser Clay Shooting System In Japan during the 1960s, Bowling had become a popular fad, and like all fads, the popularity of it had declined. 
most bowling alleys were abandoned in 1971. The president of Nintendo at this time had planned to make use of these new abandoned facilities. These plans would turn into the laser clay shooting system. It can be said that this was Nintendo's first experience with the video game industry, despite the laser clay shooting system not technically being a video game. It would make use of a projected 16mm film, and players would stand holding light guns, aiming and shooting at targets, clay and clay pigeons that were projected from the film onto the back wall of the building. A computer would calculate if a target was hit or not. This was a big success, and was a big inspiration for Nintendo to get into arcade gaming. The laser clay shooting system has not resurfaced since. Any machines and this game have disappeared. There's only photos from the 70s when it was used. Spinning Man Ed Sheeran Album in 2004, Ed Sheeran had created an album known as Spinning Man. He would discuss this album in a book he wrote. In 2004, I made my very first album, Spinning Man, named after a picture that my dad had. I burnt the CDs myself and made the covers. There were 14 songs, and they were all songs that rhymed. One lyric went, I'm a typical average teen if you know what I mean. There are probably 20 copies of Spinning Man in existence, and I have 19 of them. I don't want anyone else to get a hold of a copy. Most of these songs are lost. Ryan Starr Lost MySpace Songs Ryan Starr is an American Idol contestant who played 7th during its first season. Ryan Starr would go on to pursue a career as a rock artist releasing a single called My Religion in 2004. This single had managed to reach the top of Billboard's Hot Digital Songs chart, and eventually even ended up making the Guinness Book of World Records for the most exclusive single downloads in iTunes history. Around the time My Religion was released, she had uploaded six different songs onto her MySpace page. As you may know, all music files uploaded to MySpace before 2015 have become unplayable. All of these songs have been lost to time, and are not available anywhere online except for one known as 7AM, which had been uploaded to YouTube back in 2021. Emerald Island Emerald Island was an environmentally themed MMO, which was created by Fluid Entertainment Inc. The game launched November 3rd, 2008, and ran until late 2009. The tone and gameplay was designed for children, and was very similar to other MMOs at the time, such as Club Penguin or Animal Jam. The game apparently had $3.2 million in funding through Trinity Ventures. That's a lot of money for a game that would become so obscure and shut down very quickly. Very little is known about the game's development, most likely due to the fact it only lasted for about a year. Fluid Entertainment had been sold off to another unnamed company, which is the reason for the game's shutdown. Both the original websites for Emerald Island and Fluent Entertainment Inc. have since gone defunct. It appears that no assets from the game survived. The game has become super obscure. Art Museum Standard Federal Bank Commercial This was an animated advertisement for the Standard Federal Bank which aired at least once likely as a local funding promotion on Detroit PBS station WTVS, though it may have aired instead of other Detroit area stations, perhaps during the late 1990s. This description is what the ad is remembered to be. The ad started at a staircase in an art museum, and panned across a hall with various art frames hung on a green wall with silhouettes of people in the foreground before ultimately arriving at an art piece of the standard Federal Bank logo, with New Age music playing in the background. There may have been a female voiceover as well. For well over a decade now, people have been in search of this missing commercial. In early 2013, Lost Media Wiki contributor and creator of the wiki article centering this case, The Yoshi State, made a mock-up of what the ad may have looked like using the Trimble SketchUp program and uploaded it to the Trimble 3D warehouse. There is a station ID used by WTVS from the early 90s that lasted into the late 90s which share very strong similarities with the Lost Standard Federal Bank ad, mainly the museum-like environment at the beginning and the dominating green colour scheme. 
The Itsy Bitsy Spider The Itsy Bitsy Spider is an animated series which is based on the short film by Hyperion Animation that debuted alongside the 1992 animated film Baby's Kids. The series aired on the USA Network's USA Cartoon Express. The show centers around a girl named Leslie McGority, a spider named Itsy, and two antagonists who go by the Exterminator and her teacher Adrian. The show has fallen into obscurity, a total of 26 episodes have been made and so far only 3 episodes have been found in English. One has been found in Spanish and one has been found in Dutch. Some English promos for the series have as well been discovered in a commercial compilation on YouTube. Another Day This was an American sitcom that aired on CBS in 1978. The series didn't last very long, only having aired a total of 4 episodes. This show follows the Gardner family, who is struggling with financial issues. Don Gardner tries to support his family with the income from his job, but his job is unable to support the family. Don's wife, Guinea Gardner, gets a job to help make ends meet. Due to low ratings, the show never got any reruns, and no home media releases were ever made. Only a few TV adverts, as well as production photos, have since resurfaced. Dexter's Laboratory Robot Rumble This was going to be a 3D brawler fighting game based on the animated Cartoon Network series Dexter's Laboratory. The game was being developed by Enspace and published by BAM Entertainment. It was set to release in 2004 for the PlayStation 2, Xbox, and GameCube. The game looked pretty dope actually. The game would have been a 3D cell shaded brawler where the player would have to fight as robots in small arenas controlled by different characters of the show. The game was forced to be cancelled after the publisher BAM Entertainment filed for bankruptcy. There isn't much online about this game. The only things left of it include a few screenshots of gameplay by IGN, and character, weapon, and stage concept art designs back from when the game was announced and still in development. Interestingly, in August of 2020, a 4chan user randomly leaked some unseen gameplay screenshots from the game, which shows all different playable characters and game menu. The screenshots look to be from a PS2 build for the E3 2003 showcase. BS Super Mario Collection Back in 1997, a game was released for the Nintendo Saddle of You named BS Super Mario Collection. Although this game looks to be a simple direct port of Super Mario All-Stars, the game contains brand new content, such as a new cutscene, world map, toad house, and more. The game is extremely obscure, and because of its mystifying obscurity, not much is known about it. For this game's availability, only the ROM of Week 3 has been found, and Week 2's data being later discovered in the ROM. Both Week 1 and Week 4 currently have footage available, however are considered lost. Billbody Crazy World of Sports This is a Swiss-German animated series which first aired from 1992 to 1993. The show followed Bill Body, a sportsman who lives on Body Island where all of society on this island is based on sports. Bill attempts to master as many sports as he can, but his clumsiness and ego most of the time gets in the way. The show has fallen into major obscurity. The show had 52 episodes and only a handful have since resurfaced. The only ever home video release this series had exists through a single German language VHS. A few episodes dubbed in Portuguese have been found online, along with several short segments. During the time frame of May and June 2017, eight episodes dubbed in English were uploaded to YouTube by the channel Films and Clips. No other episodes or clips have been found. Bob Patterson Bob Patterson was a sitcom that premiered on ABC October 2nd, 2001. It follows the character Bob Patterson, America's number 3 self-help guru. While he is successful at his job after writing two books, he struggles to balance his career as well as his personal life. This sitcom was not received very well. Ratings were disappointing, 
10 episodes were created, and 5 episodes which were meant to air were cancelled and pulled off schedule. The only available episodes of this series online are the first 5 episodes. The unaired episodes have never seen the light of day. Spy vs Spy The Island Caper Spy vs Spy The Island Caper is a multiplayer platform game that had been released in 1987 by Chemco for the Famicom, being a port of the Commodore 64 version. The Famicom port had plans to be localized and released in 1989 for the Nintendo Entertainment System, but was cancelled. December 1st, 2015 a prototype ROM was listed on eBay with an opening bid of $1,000. This rare prototype was purchased, however isn't confirmed or known how much it actually sold for. This prototype from 2015 is the only one that has ever been identified. No other prototypes or even the one that was purchased on eBay have ever resurfaced online. Sticking Around Stickin' Around is a 1996 animated series that was made by Brian Leary and Robin Steele and produced by Nirvana. This show was pitched to CBS as The Sticklers. After the pitch, it was greenlit and development had begun. 26 shorts had been developed, 15 of them have resurfaced while the rest remain lost and missing. UT Ravex Lost Downloadable Ravex Remix Ravex was a Japanese electronic music group formed to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the company Avex Tracks, a label founded in 1998. Ravex was made up of pretty popular Japanese musicians. On April 29th, 2009, a limited release album had been announced by Ravex. This album would be in collaboration with Osama Tezuka's production company. In order to obtain the limited UV Ravex remixes release, a purchase of a UT Ravex character t-shirt would have been done at a Japanese Uniqlo location. Uniqlo then would provide the album through the Chaku Uta Digital Transmission Service? I guess this was a digital music transmission and database service frequently used in Japan back then, to distribute and download ringtones and full songs. Despite all the popularity of Osamu Tezuka's characters in Japan and the popularity of all the artists at the time, not a single remix has resurfaced. This remix album remains lost to this day. Baby Blues Baby Blues was an animated TV series from the year 2000 that was based on a comic strip of the same name. The show revolves around the characters of Daryl and Wanda, a couple who have recently had their first baby named Zoe. The series follows their relationship with the different supporting characters. Baby Blues was created by Warner Brothers Animation in an attempt to compete with the animated sitcoms by Fox at the time. The show took a whole 5 years to produce, and a lot of issues appeared during its airing. Baby Blues was eventually cancelled, after only 8 of the 26 episodes were broadcasted. However, the last 5 episodes of the first season eventually premiered on Adult Swim in 2002. The show's entire second season, which contains 13 full episodes, has never seen the light of day. Iditan Jump English Dubs Iditan Jump is an anime that aired from October 1st, 2005 to September 9th, 2006 in Japan. In its Japanese run, the show lasted 52 episodes. Only 26 episodes of the 52 episodes made had been dubbed into English for the US. These dubbed episodes were released by Hasbro and ran on Cartoon Network and YTV. The show was dubbed and aired in hopes of becoming a new popular toy line and anime franchise. However, due to it being sent into a 5am time slot, it didn't do as well as hoped. The 26 episodes did end up airing, however no DVDs of the show in English were ever made. The only things which have survived of this English dub consist of only 3 episodes. No other episodes have resurfaced. There is photographic evidence that full episodes were once available on the late 2000s Hasbro streaming site, Monkey Bar TV. Billy Bean and His Funny Machine From 1953 to 1957, the series had been developed by Chuck Luxinger and was based on his own American children's show, Jolly Jean and His Fun Machine with episodes being produced by Vera Lorimer. The show centers around Billy Jean and a machine that he had made. 
Other characters in the show include Yuhu the Cuckoo and Lester, who was an engine room operator that was never seen on screen. Its first series would air six different episodes, which would broadcast twice a month between July 9th, 1953 and September 14th, 1953. It would eventually be renewed five more times between 1954 and 1957. The show never had any home media release, and because of this, the show hasn't surfaced to this day. So far, only one screenshot and some production materials are the only visual proof of its existence. Bookworm Brunch Bookworm Brunch was a PBS kids block that ran from the year 2000 up until 2004. It presented an array of new Nirvana produced shows based on children's books. Interstitials from the 2000-2001 season have been proven difficult to find. Only a few have been uploaded onto the internet. Nickelodeon Launchbox Back in 1991, Nickelodeon released a half-hour educational show known as Launchbox, which ran up until 1994. The series was made in collaboration with NASA and covered information relating to space and space traveling technology. The series has been mostly found. Nine episodes were made, however three episodes are still yet to be found remaining lost. Racumen Los Filipino Commercial During the 90s, a commercial had been airing in the Philippines advertising Racumen, a line of rodenticides produced by Bay AG and sold in Australia and Asia. According to the Lost Media Wiki, this is the premise of the commercial and what it's remembered to be. The commercial's first sequence is a rat avoiding a mousetrap, then a number of rats increasing were shown. During the sequence, a voiceover saying, rat, 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 was heard, and when the rats were gradually increasing, the voiceover chants faster. When the rats are fed with racumen, the rats are slowly diminishing, so as the voiceover. There is also said to be a part where a kid was scared, then he is just standing on a chair or platform. The commercial over the years has been talked about quite a bit on many forums, however hasn't seen the light of day since its airing. Green Monkeys This is a lost animated pilot for a Disney series developed by Betty and Michael Paris... Paris Gevars? The series plot revolved around two monkeys who went by Spider and Flytrap, whom after they are taken out of the jungle, they try to run a temp agency in the Lower East Side of New York City. Green Monkeys had been pitched to Walt Disney Television in the late 90s. The pilot ended up being produced in 1999. However, Disney eventually passed the series on and decided to scrap it for unknown reasons. It was turned into a weekly comic strip, which would be shown in the local publication, Dance Papers. Advanced Driving with Graham Hill This was an ATV motoring show presented by Graham Hill two-time Formula One world champion. The series would have Graham Hill present different practical advice on ways to become a safer and greater driving on the roads of Britain, such as teaching the ways of reverse parking, overtaking, car speed, and ensuring tire safety. This series had six 30-minute episodes made. Episodes started being broadcasted from June 1974, so it's a pretty old show. There's not much known about the show's episodes and what they specifically entailed. However, a year after this show started airing, a book of the same name had been published based on the TV series. It's crazy, despite the book being widely available, any footage or even images of the series is still yet to appear and remains lost. Girl TV Girl TV was an Australian television series made for teens. This aired on Channel 7 from 2003 up until 2005. The show had four hosts who would do many interviews and talk about various topics and people all relating to a girl power message, sometimes even incorporating a musical number performed by the hosts. There isn't much known about the show, and as of today, only one full episode has resurfaced, along with a couple different interviews and segments. It is currently unknown how many episodes have been produced. Kids WB Crazy Takes Promos these were a collection of promos for the shows on Kids WB. They would take clips from the shows and edit them to make it look like the characters were having a mess up blooper on set. 
These were shown in the early 2000s, and so far, only just a few have resurfaced. One of these, which was uploaded to YouTube, features Joey from Yu-Gi-Oh trying to say his line, but his hair keeps falling over his face. A comment on this video talks about another Yu-Gi-Oh promo where Yugi's wig is blown off by a strong wind, revealing him to be bold. This crazy take promo hasn't resurfaced. Over the years, many users online have talked about other crazy take promos which haven't resurfaced since and are lost. Tortellini This was a series of Flash animated shorts that first premiered in 2004 and was seen in between different shows on Nicktoons Network. The show received harsh criticism due to crude toilet humor, bland animation style, writing, and bad voice acting. For a good while, most of this series was considered lost. However, most shorts have since been recovered and found, though two still remain missing. Bubble and Squeak Bubble and Squeak was a British live-action puppet series created by Dot to Dot Productions. This show revolved around a human wizard named Bubble and a puppet frog named Squeak. These two, along with other characters, would teach viewers of Nick Jr. how to cook and prepare healthy foods. The series was also made to promote the channel Nicktrition Block. The show ran on Nick Jr. for 25 episodes, starting February 5th, 2007, and finishing March 1st, 2007. The show had a lot of reruns. The show eventually came back on the main Nick Jr. channel until August 31st, 2007, and then it returned almost three years later in 2010 and then ending in 2014. Despite all these reruns, only one episode has managed to resurface, along with a couple of promos advertising the series. Europolitan Vodafone Advertisements Europolitan was a Swedish telecommunication company, in 2002, they were acquired by the British company Vodafone and renamed Europolitan Vodafone. During 2002, two different advertisements were shown on TV throughout Sweden related to the prepaid SIM card CU, which had been released a year prior. The first advertisement was known as Gökrul, which translates to cucumber roll. It showed a man dressed as a mime putting a cucumber into another person's mouth. A really strange ad. For a while, this was considered lost media, however has been found and uploaded online in low quality. The second advertisement that aired, however, is lost. This second ad was titled Fiskerkurs, okay, I cannot pronounce it, which translates to Fish Circus. The ad would consist of a man dressed in a gold jacket, standing on Segel's Torg in Stockholm, Sweden. I'm not good with pronouncing, so sorry if I pronounced that wrong. The man has a marionette of a real fish, which contains attached doll legs. He tells the people passing by to come closer and not be afraid. A woman then comes up and states that the fish looks nice. As you can tell, these were very weird ads. This commercial has since become lost and is missing, and I want this to resurface. This sounds really interesting and just really weird. Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood Pitch Pilot Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood is an animated series for children, which is pretty popular. It is produced by Fred Rogers Productions and is based on different characters from the original Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood series. The creator of this series has stated that it was first conceived by the Fred Rogers Company in 2006, during a meeting discussing the creation of a show to continue the legacy of Fred Rogers. A pilot animation was quickly completed and shown to PBS to be greenlit. The pilot has never resurfaced and no details about it exist. A few screenshots featuring early designs for the characters were found on Astrid Rima's website. These are believed to be taken from the pilot. 101% Whizbang with Henry and June This was a block that aired on Nickelodeon from around September 18th, 1999 up until October 29th that same year. This block was hosted by Henry and June from Kablam, and during the month of October, its title changed to 101% Spooky Whizbang. Many shorts from this block have become lost. These lost shorts include Halloween Party, a segment where Henry and June were at a Halloween party. Classroom, a small bit of this segment has been found which shows Henry and June in a classroom at night for unknown reasons. 
June points at Henry, then explains the show the viewer is about to watch. Campfire is another lost one, which involves Henry and June camping. This segment's existence was discovered after YouTuber Kahil the Retro Guy uploaded a series of commercial breaks from 1999, showing this campfire segment briefly. And Basketball Game is another lost segment, with Henry and June at a basketball game. The existence of this segment was confirmed by VHS Kid 76. Captain Mac Pilot Captain Mac was a live-action British children's show that ran from 2008 to 2010. It revolved around the character of Captain Mac, who worked at Skyrocket Control in Sunshine City and had a job of protecting the city from any sort of trouble. Around 2004, a stop-motion pilot for the show had been created and pitched to CITV. This pilot has been unreleased. The only things available of it are some resurfaced images, small clips, and an available description of the pilot. These show some notable differences such as different character names, different colors, different designs for characters, and of course, it is not live action. 64 Wars also known as Advance Wars 64, was a planned entry for the War series, planned to be released exclusively for the Nintendo 64 and had a release date of 1999. The game however was cancelled for unknown reasons and only just some screenshots and brief footage exists of it. 